Okay. <laughs> every time. I need like Zoom because then I can just press the space bar. Um, okay, so I just want to say first off, um, on behalf of the clubs that are hosting it, which is um, Ski and Snow, the Outdoor Adventure, and then also Mountain Bike Club, just thank you to our panelists for coming and volunteering their time and their wisdom and their experience tonight. And also thank you to um, any of our attendees. We have a fun night of discussion ahead of us and uh, we hope you're excited to hear from these amazing ladies. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're just gonna start off, um, our parents are gonna introduce themselves so we get to know a little bit more about them. So let's go ahead and uh, start with Dr. Olstead. Mm -hmm. Would you like to start us off with introducing your name, uh, where you're from, where you currently are, and what activities that you're involved in? Hi, that's me. I'm Dr. Olstead. I think I know a few of you. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Good to see you returning. Um, I teach geography and environmental sustainability at SUNY Oneonta. Um, I grew up in western New York, which is about a, as far away from any sort of outdoor public land, big wild space that you can get. Um, but then I went to college in New Hampshire and ever since then I've been climbing and backpacking and hiking and skiing and sailing and just everything possible I can outside. So good. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. All right, have we go over to Wendy? You could introduce yourself. Ah, thanks. Um, I'm Wendy, uh, Wendy Ewing, and I am, yeah, living in Reading. I'm originally from a little small town up in Washington called North Bend. It's about 40 minutes outside of Seattle. And I grew up um, with parents that were super into the outdoors. So um, I do a lot of backpacking, mountaineering, skiing, mountain biking, now ultra running, pers well, pursuing ultra running. <laughs> and um, yeah, sorry, I'm reading off the list of the, the stuff that we're answering. Um, I think my favorite thing to do outdoors is um, definitely skiing and trail running. Fantastic, love it. Um, how about we go down to Anna, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, hi everyone, my name is Anna. I'm originally from Poughkeepsie. Um, I am a grad student in Syracuse right now, um, but I'm in touch with you all because I went to Oneonta for my undergrad. Um, and I spent a few years working for Outward Bound, leading um, 20 day wilderness canoe trips in Florida. So I would say canoeing is what I do most, but I also have spent a lot of time backpacking and farming and hiking and kayaking and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, nice to be here. Amazing. All right, and Morgan, you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Morgan. Um, I'm originally from Rochester, New York, uh, actually. Went to school in Pittsburgh, uh, but I moved out when I was like 16 to start competitive skiing for a career. And I'm a 2018 Olympian and I'm a current member of the US ski team. Um, I love to be outdoors. Skiing is my favorite thing to do, but I also love hiking, swimming, and then surfing has been my latest endeavor right now. So, yeah. Fantastic. Um, so if we want to just keep that order, we can go through um, and ask the first question. So what's your most memorable experience outdoors? Hmm. And go ahead. Yeah, think on it. And then Dr. Olsted, if you want to start or yeah, we can change the order if someone wants to go in different order. But there you go. What's your most memorable experience outdoors? I'm ready to go unless somebody else wanted to jump in. Okay, then um, two years ago, I normally in the summers I work for the National Park Service or U.S. Forest Service and just sort of neat, gorgeous places all over the country. And two years ago, just everything fell through. So I decided I was going to do the best thing ever and also the stupidest thing ever and did a two-week solo backpacking trip through Gates of the Arctic National Park 
which is in far northern Alaska, the Brooks Range above the Arctic Circle, where there are no trails and no roads and no rangers and lots of bears and landslides and rivers. And it was gorgeous and absolutely terrifying. But I survived, and so now I just think of it as gorgeous. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I have a question about that. What kind of, how long, like, did you train for that? Um, I didn't. Like, so I was expecting to work okay. for the park service. So I just, I guess normally I'm out, I've worked a lot as a paleontology technician. So I'm used to, I worked in Denali before and elsewhere in Alaska. So I, was, I thought I would be prepared for hiking around the back country, but I'm not accustomed to wearing two weeks worth of stuff on my back while by myself in the middle of nowhere. So like, I didn't train, I was terribly underprepared, but it was gorgeous, I survived. Hmm. That's awesome. Um, I, let's see, for me, I'm, wait, is it my turn? Sorry, can I go? I'll go. Yes, go for it, it's your turn, go for it. I feel so awkward because I can only see one person at a time. I don't have the gallery view. So I'm just like, just talking, talking to the wind here. Um, I, let's see, six years ago, seven years ago, I, no, I probably five or six. Um, I did a backpacking trip on the Lost Coast. It was um, my first backpacking trip with the Outdoor Leadership Program at Simpson. Um, and it was my first backpacking trip, actually. I had gone on several because I grew up backpacking with my family, but it was the, my first time without my family, without my parents. And it rained for 72 hours on us nonstop. And it's funny because when you backpack in the North Cascades, you just don't go when it's raining like you don't plan to go when it's raining um well we were on a 14-day expedition and it rained for uh, at least three days straight and it was horrible and my tent was leaking and I was on my period and it was all the things and it was like not great group dynamics either and it was just this like three days of I don't know, just like total emotional and physical suffering that I will never forget. And I will always be grateful for after the fact. But at the time it was just, it was, ugh. yeah, it was definitely a, like a turning point for me of like, okay, so this is what it looks like to be an independent outdoors woman. So yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really important to know that it's not all glory. It's not all finesse in the photo. It's <laughs> the hard, the truth and the ugly. Like it's, it's everything. And it's awesome that like you can share that and appreciate it. All right, Anna, if you would like to share your experience. Yeah, um, this was such a hard question. I feel like there's so many answers, um, but one of my most memorable experiences was on the first course that I ever guided and um, the population that I worked with are students that were referred to us through the Department of Juvenile Justice and so they often had like pretty tough things going on at home and or in their school life or whatever so I was on a course with female instructors and all female students and at the beginning they were not super comfortable in the environment, just like not confident people at all um, with like these situations that they had. Um, and on the last two days of our trip, we paddled, they decided to paddle 30 miles overnight to get to the campsite so that they could have a layover day the next day. And on that layover day, we did an activity like talking about things that they had like gotten from this experience. And they all shared that um, through this 20 day course, they like realized that they were good people that had done bad things. They weren't bad people. And it was just like so powerful to see like that, um, I don't know, offering people experiences and like spaces that they've never been in before can have like such an impact on them. 
So I don't know, that was really cool. But also Florida is just crazy for wildlife. Like we would paddle with alligators and manatees and dolphins and um, like just anything, monkeys and river otters and like the craziest things. So I would say that whole environment is wild too, but yeah. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. I, I love that they got that out of that trip. Um, all right, Morgan, go ahead and share your experience. Um, my favorite experience, I think it's doesn't necessarily involve a lot of like hiking or anything, but um, I have actually been kind of injured for the last like three years with knee injuries um, from skiing. But this past year, I actually got the chance to, I wasn't allowed to ski, but hike up a mountain with my friends as they ski toured up it. And it's also one of the greatest and dumbest ideas I think I've ever had because it was just brutal three miles of post hauling and just like climbing up snow. And I wasn't prepared in any sort of way for that. Um, but the way I got down was on a sled and it was probably the most fun I had had since hurting myself um, with my knee injury. And I like from there on out, like I bought a pair of uh, ski touring gear, like I got the entire setup and I couldn't ski though. I still at that point was like, okay, I still can't ski, but I'm going to do this someday and I'm going to be so excited because that horrible experience was still so much more fun and so revealing to like the other side of um, my sport. So I think it was really, really uh, fun to learn a little bit about myself as well. Amazing. I love it. All right. So we're going to turn to Hales and she'll have the next question. Um, okay. So my next question for you guys is as a female, what are some obstacles you have faced when um, like participating or just doing whatever activity um, in the outdoors? And yeah, you can think on it. And if you have an answer, have something you want to say, you can just feel free to say it. Are we going in the same order again? Um, you can, but otherwise, if you just have it and you have something you want to say, feel free to just unmute and you can go. <laughs> Also, feel free if you don't have anything to say to the question, we can move on to another one. Um, so if you don't have anything to say to a particular question, you can just skip yourself. But if any of you have something you want to share to it, please feel free to be like, I would like to go. <laughs> I guess uh, I will try and cut the line here. Um, I am a competitive athlete as well as an outdoor lover as well. Um, and I think the biggest or the hardest thing that I have had to deal with is not only the competitiveness that uh, comes outside of sports, but the expectations that come and overlap into the other side and to the like complete nature side of my sport and the same type of um, expectancies that I and I feel like I get in the competitive world, they start to bleed over to my love for the outdoors. So it's really hard to, I feel like, go out and just be like, no expectations. Um, I'm here for myself and just kind of turn that off because unfortunately there is always a score on the board for, um, for our performances. But at the end of the day, that's like not the point of what we do. So for me, that's at least really hard, especially when you have male competitors constantly sharing the same score, the same, the same um, uh, course and the same competitions, so. Yeah, I, um, I'm not never competing on the same level as you, like not even close, but like I get that and like that same like men are very much like in your face about like how well they perform or whatever we're like sometimes we just kind of like we're gonna go we're gonna compete we're gonna do what's gonna be done and we don't need to like 
shove it in someone's face or something. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, would anyone else like to share? Um, no. I, um, so I feel like one of the biggest obstacles for me has been um, transitioning from kind of being born into the outdoor lifestyle with my parents and being d definitely one of the guys for so long because when I was a kid there just was no at least I didn't know of any other girls like doing the things that we were doing um and so it just meant either like I was hanging out with my family a bunch which was great but um also like if we were around other people my age they were mostly boys and then um once social media became a thing all of a sudden there's like all of these other women doing this awesome crazy badass stuff and i like i had like a real struggling time with my ego and going like oh i felt like i went from being a big fish in a little pond to being like you know one of the only girls to like be doing this stuff and then all of a sudden there's all of these other amazing women which is amazing but man, it really did a number on my ego for a long time. And even still sometimes, like I, the comparison game on social media is just, it's such a trap for me. And I find myself just like scrolling through, like looking at all these other accomplishments that women are having and, you know, all these adventures they're going on and all of these summits they're doing or these lines that they're skiing. And I'm like, oh, when is it? Like, when do I get to go do that stuff? Or like, when am I going to be there? And that's definitely been something that I've had to, um, be really conscientious about putting a stop to because it just, it's such a trap for me. Um, and yeah, so just trying to remember that like, I, I'm responsible for my own life and that's it and my own outdoor pursuits. And I get to be in community with other women locally around me. And I, I don't, I don't have to worry about the social media stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely had to be conscientious about remembering that. Yeah, social media, even in the movie, it brings up the point of for the part of the movie with the biker gang, the mm -hmm. female, female or biker group and the Lotus and how the main the main person in that film was saying that she felt that same way, that I was like she was the only female, that she was no one else was like her um but then through the internet and through me social media she found her community in her case it didn't break her down it she built a community around it but totally. i mean i feel like it's an experience most women have felt when if they've been the only only girl doing it it becomes your identity that you are the girl who can do what all the boys can do and i can see why that's it's hard to deal with, but I think it's a powerful thing for us all to embrace. Mm -hmm. um, and does anyone have anything else to this question or I'll jump to the next one? Yeah, um, I was just gonna comment, um, which I totally agree with everything that's been said. I've been thinking a lot about like expectations of like how women should be in spaces being like something that weighs on me as well as growing up one of the boys, I would say, in that <laughs> scenario. But I think another component is like access to gear and experiences when like the outdoor world isn't necessarily like designed specifically for women. And so I know that like without um, like falling into different groups or falling into different like opportunities, um, I, wouldn't have been able to do a lot of things. Um, like if I didn't grow up camping or if I didn't work somewhere that I had access to gear, that that would be a, a huge barrier because it is, um, yeah, an expense as well as really intimidating to feel like safe in these types of um, outdoor spaces. Like when you're the one who doesn't know something, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like you always think like as like girls growing up, it's like, oh yeah, you play with your dolls or you like dress up or like you all the stuff that you're at home with mom or whatever. But it's like more often than not, it's like we're outside and we're barefoot 
running around with all the guys as well. Like, we're getting dirty, maybe as dirty and stuff. And so why does it become to a point, like, when we get middle school, high school, whatever, people have to tell us, like, okay, now you need to grow up and you need to, like, go be more of a girl or whatever. Well, why can't growing up just be, I'm going to go out and do some badass stuff in the outdoors, like, just like other guys. So, yeah, I definitely, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Does anyone else have any other they want to share about those obstacles or like barriers that they've noticed for them? That's it. Just to chime in here, I guess I need to go on social media more. I'm terrible about social media because I'm still stuck with not knowing any other girls that want to go. I'm always backpacking by myself. I can't climb by myself, but I've I've been thinking I've been like outside climbing with another female. It's always been a group of guys and everything else I've done has been by myself because I just, if nobody wants to go, then I'll go anyway. And a problem I have then with, with climbing in particular, you need to be the same weight usually as the person who's belaying you and you need to be roughly the same skill level. So I've always then, the, the one movie, the one segment in the movie with the climber who is constantly whispering in her head that she wasn't good enough. That's that's what I feel. I, I have a really hard time enjoying climbing unless I know my partner really well because I'm constantly just whispering that I'm gonna fall or not be able to belay or smash or just something's gonna go wrong there. I don't, it just, there's nobody that's my same size, my same ability that I've found yet. Keep looking. Um, There's got to be someone. There's got to be someone. Something that, that's really easy. No. Once I have this baby, let's go. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Hooray. Yes. I was going to say, we'll uh, connect later. <laughs> Once, like, oh, happens, obviously, we can't do it in the snow, but we can do it after. <laughs> it was last week I was at the Gunks. It was 70 degrees. So. What? Yeah. We, we should have been, been there. there. <laughs> we should have been there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Though. Um, and for anyone who is interested in finding more of a community um, of women outdoors, something that I did not know, and I did, it was only very limited research, research led me to typing women and outdoors. It's amazing how many organizations outside of college mm -hmm. campuses there are um, that just get women together to go hiking, to go running. To I mean, it was shown in the movie, but even. Um, hike like a woman is a hashtag and instagram profile um i'm yeah profile and they have amazing photos and quotes of from women and that actually leads us into our next uh our next question one of the quotes on their instagram page says i found my heart upon a mountain i did not know i could climb i wonder how many other pieces of myself are secured away in places i judge i cannot go and really this is just i have this here as just a what are your thoughts on on a sentence like this on this perception of there's pieces of yourself in places that you judge you can't get to so i um when I first graduated from Simpson, I didn't, a lot, a lot of my friends that I were in the outdoor leadership program moved away um, and I didn't have a, like hardly any kind of a female outdoor community. And I also was at the point where I was like, man, I really want to get better at some of these outdoor pursuits. I want to get better at climbing. I want to get better at skiing, but I was so intimidated because backcountry skiing was becoming really popular and that for a really long time was a really male dominated sport. Climbing for a long time has been a male dominated sport. And it's always like, if you know that you're not like amazing at something and you want to get better, you're like, how, how do I get better? And you start thinking about like not wanting to be a burden on other people and like being overwhelmed with like, how do I even, how do I even like begin to, um, grow my skill level. And I came really close to just like, uh, oh, never mind. I'm just going to stick within my comfort zone. I'm just going to stick to inbound skiing. I'll just, uh, I'll just climb whenever. 
but I decided to make a commitment to myself. Um, okay, you're going to spend the next two to three years spending time with people that are more proficient than you. You're going to spend the next two to three years pursuing um, people that are more competent, more skilled, and more, yeah, more proficient than you are at this. And you're, you're going to put, get comfortable with being uncomfortable and you're going to force yourself into those spaces, even though they seem really far off and unachievable. And I did, I met somebody at the club that I work at, um, who I found out was a really avid climber and she was a woman. And I was just like, Hey, can we go get coffee? I would just, you seem like somebody that I, you know, love to be friends with and would maybe love to climb with. And here's my skill level. I'd like to get better. Will you help me? And it was a total like leap of faith question. And it, I felt so silly just asking. Um, but she was like, that was one of her most memorable moments of me. We've become best friends. Um, but she like refers back to that. She was like, I've never had anybody just ask me, ask me for help, ask me to like mentor them in getting better. And I, it was like really surprising. And so anyway, I, that's long story long. Um, I think it's really easy to look at all of those spaces and thinking like, oh, I can't get there or like, I, I don't even know how, but the best thing you can do is just commit to yourself to getting into those spaces so that you can learn more about yourself and grow yourself in those, those spaces um, and just be willing to take the risk of potentially being shot down and told no. Um, but potentially finding amazing relationships and people that will walk with you in helping you get better or helping you even experience certain places of the outdoors for the first time. I like that. I think that's really good advice for anyone and really fitting for what that quote was saying. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to share about how they felt or thoughts when they heard or read that quote? Sure. Um, I think something that I've been like reflecting on is that there's no um, like right way or one way to do any of these like outdoor activities. And what really like brought me there, I guess, was um, this summer I backpacked the Long Trail, which is the entire length of Vermont from south to north. Um, and I went with a friend of mine. It was a 26 day trip and it was like Corona had just begun and we both had lost our jobs and it was like this whole thing. And so we, we went and I had never been backpacking with just like another woman before. Ever been backpacking with men before and that trip was just so in totally different than anything I had ever done because how we went about it was very different than anything. It wasn't about like pushing miles or it wasn't a trip like um, that. It wasn't like very goal driven. It was more like about this like relationship and time that we had on this trail. And I don't know, it was just a really different experience for me. And I think I just realized that, yeah, you get to decide like what you want to, like how you want to pursue anything and like what you want your journey outdoors or whatever it is to look like. And I think that's just really um, important when you have an idea of what like people think that you should do or what you have an expectation for yourself of how you think you should do something. Um, but I don't know, I just don't think there's a right way to do it. So like continuing to explore different ways has been really cool for me. And I, I love the combination of those two thoughts. It's like, um, knowing that there's many different ways of doing it and seeing Wendy's example of here is one way like it might not be the way you choose to be able to get to see these places that you didn't think you could go to before or the skills that you didn't think you had before and there's many ways of getting getting there um, awesome does anyone else have anything else they'd like to share about um, finding finding yourself in places that you didn't think you could go before as referencing to the quote. Uh, 
Um, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because this is my entire research topic and I've written a dissertation and now two books on what's called place identity. And we would love how... to hear your experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it's, it's what I'm fascinated by is how who we are is made up of our experiences in life and all of the things that have made me who I am are things that I've done outside and they're usually things I wasn't expecting expecting to do so mountains that I literal mountains mountains that are out there in the world that I was not intending to climb and ended up climbing or just things I've done that I didn't want to do or that were too hard to do I never should have backpacked across the gates of the arctic but that that is that that's part of who I am now and it's all the the places petrified forest national park that came to the Gunnison national park Badlands national park Denali all of these places are who I am and it's because I was cold and tired and hungry and afraid and felt like it was the stupidest thing that I'd ever done every time I do those things. That's what has built me are those places. That is not my elevator talk for my dissertation at all, by the way. <laughs> Anybody else have anything they want to say on the um, that quote? If not, I think like um, go into like the film No Man's Land, the film, so the like program one it was called, but the film and like what your thoughts are on it, what you took away from it, how you related to it. Yeah, go ahead. I guess I can uh, go ahead and also piggyback on the quote. Um, I think fear plays a large role in uh, acquiring new skills and new experiences, um, especially with myself, like uh, learning new skills and having to do them on snow for the first time is really, really freaking scary. Um, but it's just one of those things that like you kind of have to set yourself up as, yeah, I'm probably going to get my butt kicked and then probably gonna have a lot of bruises and be super sore and, but hopefully on the other side of it I know that I'm probably gonna be better for it and I think that's the scariest part you're like you're not really sure what's on the other side um but I think the film actually brought out a lot of these uh fears that people have and like just kind of shared them and put them out in the open and we're like hey these are things women across this country and across the world have done and overcome. And this is how badass uh, women live their lives. And it was so, so inspiring. Also, I was just sitting there. I was like, okay, what do I want to do next? Like, this is, this is awesome. Like I have role models that are on screens now that I can kind of relate to and uh, inspire to be like. So that was really cool for me to watch it. I love that and I also relate to that a lot. I've actually already looked into a climbing gym around my area. <laughs> exactly. So, definitely I think I'm gonna even go as soon as Tuesday. So yeah, I I hadn't I wouldn't have been able to put that into words like you just did. But the idea of having role models is so important and it's awesome that we're starting to see that. Anyone else is welcome to go. Um, I really resonated with the speak to me softly film. Um, I, like, I was like, man, I can't believe nobody's made a film about this yet because it's such a powerful, like it, it dawned on me of like, oh man, yeah, this is a huge issue. Like how we speak to ourselves and it plays such a huge role in our experience and, Gosh, even like our ability to um, to like push farther, push harder, or um, enjoy our time in the outdoors. I mean, I like most of the outdoor sports that I do include a lot of physical suffering. Like I, <laughs> I wish I could say that I just do all of it for fun, but I I like really go out sometimes to put myself in a place of discomfort, um, and I 
man, the conversations that you begin to have with yourself. And it totally depends sometimes on your day or your season of life. But I can remember like we, our local mountain, Mount Shasta here, I, um, we will ski tour up to a certain point multiple times throughout the winter. And I can like look back and think of so many different types of um, like self-talk that I've done on those trips. And they've totally correlated to like seasons in my life. But I will say the times that I have been like harshest on myself or um, just like spoken really down on myself, they've been a really horrible experience. Like they've just been, ugh. And I think it was so like, so good that in the film, she ended that film with just no, like, let's speak to ourselves encouragingly. Like, let's speak good words to ourselves. Let's speak, let's speak actual truths to ourselves, and not just these like lies that, I don't know, we've been cultured to believe. Um, and I, yeah, I just thought that was such a powerful film and it was really um, just made me want to be so much more intentional about the things that I say to myself as I'm pushing myself out there or as I'm, you know, trying to suffer through something. Um, so yeah, it was, a, that was an, an amazing film. Yeah. I like that you brought that up and cause it's like, you think we already have so many voices outside of our heads talking to us and influence how we're thinking and then we also have our own head inside so it's definitely like that that, that definitely mental struggle and that mental component to doing the things we do and not like a price you pay but like it's, that's just gonna come with it and like you said like thinking being conscious of those self-talks what exactly are you saying when you're having those and how is that affecting you um anyone else want to share what their thoughts were something they took away I just really like the variety. Um, I've seen so like all the BAMP films and things like that that do the variety, but to have the huge variety and it all be females doing trail running and boxing and climbing and sailing. I love this the sailing one in particular. First of all, it makes me want to go out sailing again, but it's also that she wanted to share it with other people and the trail running. I'm not at all a trail runner whatsoever, but the fact that they had that whole group that was working together to inspire one another too, that is something that I feel like I don't normally see in the band films where it's just like blaring music and people jumping off cliffs and things like that. That, that teamwork and that inspiration were really great to see a variety of activities yeah for sure because and like maybe I'm just not as like um exposed or like not with like the culture or whatever of like different videos and stuff but I don't feel like it's they stick to like either that one um activity or their own sport and then they're like into all the aspects of that sport you just see the front and what people think makes it cool and stuff but i feel like they forget that a lot of it what makes it cool is like what is that person what was their life like what's their story what's their values what do they get from doing this um uh, so yeah i agree like it's very cool that they showed all those different activities and the different people from different walks of life doing it um, yeah Oh, and also at this time too, anyone like uh, who's just here listening, if you watched it and you want to share anything that you got from the movie, by all means, uh, you can chime in. And if you feel uncomfortable just breaking into the silence, feel free to raise your hand if you want, um, and we can call on you if that's more comfortable. Um, but yeah, we would love to hear uh, what our like fellow peers are thinking too. So please chime in. And that goes for any point during the session as well. Um, 
Um, I just wanted to say I kind of like it was the one I forget the name of it, but it was the one where it filmed the video where it was the um, the I forget what the term it's like the the ski mountain guide, and she was there with a friend, and it was like she the one friend was basically kind of like playing the role of someone who like doesn't know anything uh, and like was like oh I don't want to do this and I, I feel like that was very much like that stereotypical of what people think women are like in the outdoors and like the whole like I'm like cold and I don't want to do this and, oh, we have to go all the, like that far up or whatever and um I think it was just kind of funny and really cool to be like actually no jokes on you and not like I mean some people might be like that but not all of us like you can't be like no that's how all women are going to be like um because then you have like the other girl who is the actual guide and like um I mean they're both guides but like in their role playing um just showing that like no actually I'm doing this and you can do it too so I thought that was um a neat and um fascinating interpretation and way to explain it yeah from Nicole um, yeah, Hales, I wanted to agree with you that, like, I feel like the stereotypes were really, um, like, prevalent throughout the film, and I thought it was really cool because you don't always have to be, like, a pro at anything to, like, understand the struggle that's, you know, it's, it's like, felt amongst all females, I feel like, in a lot of sports and outdoor activities. Um, and I also wanted to say to Dr. Olstead that I think it's so cool that I didn't even know, like, you started a lot of your adventurous activities, like, in college. So I think that was also motivating because, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people that are, like, pros, like, especially women and in sports start when they're, like, so young. But I don't think it's ever too late to, like, start anything you're passionate about, depending on your environment, especially. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I had to say. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Nicole. Like yeah. Hi, I just wanted to say that I, I watched the movie of Hills and I thought it was both like extremely like inspiring and terrifying. And I would love to imagine myself like doing all these things, but it's it's just scary to put yourself in a place like that. Like the um the rock climbing one scared the shit out of me. When she fell, I was like, oh my gosh. But I understand why people put themselves in the situation because they want to push themselves. They want to like complete something. And I, I just th I just think it's really cool. Thanks for sharing, Chloe. I can hear, and we live together, so I could just hear her giggling right now <laughs> in the room. <laughs> um, does anyone else want to share any thoughts or whatever from, from the film? Um, if not, we do have some other questions. I have another question once, if you're all good with this part. And if you do think of anything else, please feel free to sway the conversation back to wherever, whatever questions that speaks to you. Um, so looking at an, just another uh, topic that we can talk about is, so looking at the film and seeing the roles that these women are playing in their community and, um, like just within themselves, you can see this power, this freedom that you get from being part of the outdoors. And I feel like this is a pretty common trend um, that you feel this like awakening when you're outdoors. Um, so looking at that trend, how do you feel that it, um, that being a woman in the outdoors translates over to your professional lives? Um, may it be work, friends, or like social and professional lives? I think one thing that I um, get from being in like leadership roles in the outdoors is like this weird feeling at the same time of being like totally insignificant in this like outdoor environment that you're just a tiny piece of as there's weather, all these other factors, while also the feeling that I can do literally anything that I want to. So it's like this weird in between and I think that that's just a really um I love that perspective like going back into other aspects of my life like knowing that um 
nothing matters, but also things do matter and you can like influence whatever you want. I don't know. I do feel really like inspired by that perspective and like reminded of that when things suck in the real world. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because you that's right. <laughs> if yeah. you can get through, uh, if also if Dr. Olsen can get through the, if, where did you say it was? Uh, oh no, Gates of the Arctic. If Dr. Olsen can get through the gates of the gates of the Arctic, I imagine that gives you a sense of resilience no matter where you are in the rest of your life. Definitely, like. Uh, what you're saying about the two different positions definitely like gives you a lot of power because okay yeah you're in a weird place they're just in your daily life and it's like like you're saying like you sometimes feel insignificant but then it's just that own personal reminder it'd be like yeah well I had just done that and I was like I'm a badass who just did this so I see no I'm not insignificant and sometimes like just that little memo to yourself is enough to overcome and like block out that I'm in the way so I liked it. Um, you touched upon that. I love this question. And um, I just, I think that who I am as a person actually comes greatly from, yeah, my experiences as um, a person who competes, who skis in the outdoors, who um, gets to experience the world and all of its uh, beauties and flaws. Like I love uh, having that be my essential like sense of identity because when you do bring it to your, um, let's say professional world, like there, I feel like I gain a huge sense of confidence because of that experience. Like I, if I can go ski and check myself off a jump and flip and like, I don't know that just gives me a sense of yeah okay I'm confident in who I am I'm confident that whatever um, BS I might have to deal with during the day like I can I can take that on pretty easily and um, I think I'd love to be able to get that to more people and more women especially That really speaks to a presentation that I saw a renowned researcher and a uh, woman, uh, Amy Cuddy, has done research on the, con the correlation between how you um, hold yourself, like physically how you um, stand and how it affects your emotions. Uh, she's, uh, if you're interested, she has a U uh, TED talk and her name's Amy Cuddy again, um, that explains the research further. but. Standing, using her research of standing tall, standing strong, standing in what she calls a power pose or like Superman, Superwoman pose um, can actually translate into changing the neurons in your brain and making you more confident. Looking at that research in the sense of standing on top of a mountain with your arms up above your head. How many times in a typical world where like uh, a societal like in classrooms, in the workplace, do you get to stand in a position of complete power? Like you can stand on the top of a mountain. And that's really where this, where this question really came from, that idea of going from standing on top of a mountain with your hands in the most powerful position you can have them and your whole body in a power pose and how that can translate to walking into a classroom and being completely confident or walking into a job interview confident. Um, I see here that we have a question or a hand up from Nicole. Go ahead. Um, yeah, this goes to like anyone, I guess. Um, so I know that almost all of you like have done like your activity or sport like very independently, but like how did it feel to give that confidence to like another female close to you or like have you been able to do that? And like, how did it make you feel? I'll share. Um, I, so I started a guiding company a few years back with this goal in mind to like help people who are interested in the outdoors, but don't necessarily have the resources to do it. Um, and I, some of the people that 
I was able to take out and teach and help them experience backpacking. Uh, like it was amazing. I mean, I I would get back from a trip and I'm like, oh, this this is why. This is why I started this business because you watch people not only um, like have a great backpacking experience, but you get to watch people do something that they didn't necessarily think they were capable of doing. And that that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, there's a lot. Um, there was a lot of times that I got to see people experience physical suffering for the first time. Like you're climbing with a 30 pound pack up a steep trail and they're like, I have never experienced this something this horrible in my whole life they're like I, I don't think I can do this and then you walk with them and you get to encourage them and sit with them in that pain for some time and they eventually keep going forward and they make it to this epic alpine lake and they're like oh my gosh I'm amazing like I didn't think I'd ever be able to do that and you're like yes yes that's the whole that's the whole point of like of guiding is to help people experience something they didn't necessarily think that they could do and hopefully encourage them to go and do it themselves next. Like, great. We like, you needed a little bit of community to do it the first time. Awesome. I'm like, that's my favorite part of it. But then like you get to push them to go and do it themselves because they're totally capable. So I don't know if that totally answered your question, but like, I feel like I've had a few moments where I've gotten to like, be um or make it possible for somebody to experience something like that and it was it was the most it was the most amazing thing ever it was really great that definitely answered my question that must be like such a surreal like feeling though that only a lot of certain people like get to feel all the time though and share your passions also yeah it's actually it's really interesting talking with um guides because you know, one of the things that I learned throughout um, starting that business was I learned a lot of guides become guides because they want to work in the outdoor industry. They want to work outdoors and they get burnt out really quickly because they don't love people. And I realized that actually has to be the first thing to be a, like to sustain a guiding life is you have to love people and you have to like love people in their most vulnerable, um, I mean, I guess you could say ugly, but I think it's beautiful. Like their most suffering moments, um, because that's so much of, um, what people experience out there, um, is just that, like the difficulty of whatever you're doing. Um, and I, it's just interesting talking with some guides and they get really jaded really quickly because they're like, oh yeah, clients, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, like we have this amazing opportunity to be able to bring people along to the things that we're doing. Um, and yeah, it was just really surprising. Like I realized you have to love people first and, and then love the outdoors in order to sustain a job in guiding. Um, so yeah, it was, that's, that was a really interesting thing that I learned. <laughs> I wish I had someone like you growing up because I grew up on a team of all boys, all boy coaches, and I, there wasn't really someone to like reach out and be like, Hey, you can do this. Like you, you have what you have, what it takes to accomplish this goal. Um, so that's so cool. But I think we need more people like you in this world. So. Oh, God, thanks. I didn't even know people like you who you know, didn't have that encouragement. You did it anyway. You're like, through all you boys, I'm just going to go be an amazing Olympian. I, that's, I think you like show the resiliency of, you know, of the things that women have. Like we have the ability to push through without encouragement, without um, camaraderie and still, I mean, still do amazing things. We're, re we're really resilient. And I feel like you just totally encapsulate that. Women are fucking awesome. Uh, freaking awesome. <laughs> and we're all in college. It's probably, <laughs> I have professors that curse at this point. <laughs> um, so I think it's up to Hales if you want to ask. Yeah. Ask 
Um, I was thinking I have like one final question for you guys before we just kind of open it to any kind of Q&A, like panelists, you could, if you have a question for another panelist, if people in the audience have a question for panelists or other people or whatever, yeah. Anybody can ask anyone anything. Um, but my last question is basically what was, what's your like, for you, your number one, your favorite piece of advice that you would give to someone a girl, a woman, lady, whatever, trying to just go and accomplish the, anything amazing in the outdoors. Like, what would you be a, your advice to them before they start? I'll just chime in here and go back to something Nicole said that I didn't really do much outdoors. I played in the backyard growing up, but I didn't do hiking or climbing, or I guess I sailed a little bit growing up, but it was really intimidating at first at college that people had, there's this big outdoor program and people had all sorts of experience and it was really intimidating at first. And then I realized that people are really excited to share what they know and are really happy to have anybody come along. And so I, the best thing I can think of is don't be afraid to go and try. And if it's by yourself, go. If somebody invites you and you're not totally sure you can climb a route or take it, make it to the top of the mountain, go anyway, just go. You can't just, just go. Um, and with that, something that I've found often, and we'll see it at Outdoor Adventure Club often, um, and with my friends trying to get them to come along, one of the biggest obstacles beyond skill level, um, like the belief that they can or cannot do it, is gear. And I'm not talking skis, I'm not talking even a backpack. Something as simple as having, well, maybe a backpack, um, but not skis or like poles or spikes. It's just clothing. It's just having like their perception of a 30 degree day is ruined because they're wearing wool, they're wearing cotton socks, they're wearing a cotton t shirt. And that's a big thing. My advice for anyone who's trying to get into outdoors ask your outdoor friends to borrow gear. I know I always bring multiple layers of clothing whenever I'm going on a hike with someone who isn't as or more experienced than I, because that's one thing that you can help make there make a difference. Yeah, that's so good. I, and I would also say you don't need to drop $500 on an Arcteryx jacket to fit to like pursue the outdoors. Most of my best finds have been from thrift stores. So on top of, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So good. I, you'll find Patagonia stuff at a thrift store. But on top of what you're saying, I would also encourage you guys to know, um, learn the material that you should be wearing. So like poly, nylon, wool, like know the material. You don't have to worry about the brand name. I mean, especially if you're shopping, thrift shopping, because it's you're not dropping a ton of money on something. There are some things that I will save up for months for and drop money on, but it's usually due to safety. Like if I'm going to get a really, if I'm going to, if I know I'm going to be backpacking in the rain, I'm going to spend some money on a good high quality rain jacket. Um, but like all these base layers and mid layers and puffies, like, Dude, there are, you have so much access at thrift stores. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's actually, I was showing this, $5 thrift shop. North yeah. Face, perfect condition. Well, a little paint on it, but <laughs> I don't care. I'll toss in here extra socks too. That is my other big P, always bring extra socks. Mm -hmm. You can and have one too many pairs of socks. I'll just do it. <laughs> um, oh, that's a very <laughs> the other piece of advice that I have is don't I actually what Tyra, what you were saying, but like, yeah, don't don't avoid your fear. Like step into that fear. Go and say yes, even and practice getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Don't avoid the suffering because you're going to experience it. It's, it's inherent to the outdoors. 
um, physical suffering and even mental and emotional suffering. Like you, you grow in such a whole way when you're in the outdoors because it pushes you to your most vulnerable points. That was also something I was going to say back a couple questions ago was in like outdoors and how it translates to like leadership and professional life. I have grown so much in my ability to be vulnerable because I'm constantly when I'm with people in the outdoors at my most vulnerable state. Um, it just usually because we're like pushing so hard or suffering, but I don't have the energy to have all of these filters. Like you just get raw Wendy. Um, and what it does is it allows me as a manager to be vulnerable with my staff, to be vulnerable with my coworkers and actually create a healthy, good, positive work environment. Um, and I think that's something that, yeah, I don't think I could have gained anywhere else. I mean, that I know of, I just, I think that's helps tremendously in my ability to be transparent and vulnerable. Um, and I think it directly correlates with the workplace. So anyway, all that to be said, don't avoid suffering. Suffering is a good thing. It can be used for good. You can grow so much in it. Just embrace it. I always tell my clients, embrace the suffer fest. That's funny that you say it that way because I always tell people to embrace the suck. So yes. <laughs> same mission, <laughs> different way. Um, but I guess the other thing I would say about it is um, like I always have some sort of mantra for myself because it's like so repet like things are just so repetitive of like okay I can't like that you're telling yourself it kind of goes back to what we were saying about like the messages you send yourself but I for the first like I don't know probably five courses that I guided I um wrote like be bold in huge letters on top of my field notebook because it's just like so easy especially when you're surrounded by um like other male guides or whatever um, and in an environment that you think that you might be less skilled or qualified in, like when you're just starting to just kind of like shy away from things. But I think like be bold has been my mantra for a really long time now. And it like keeps becoming relevant in different ways. So anyway, whatever it is for you. But I like that. It's like just small little thing to keep reminding yourself to like, negate in a way any of that like small talk you're saying that might just like go through your head without you realizing it um so yeah i like that um any other advice you guys want to share or that you tell someone i um i would always say or i guess as a kid i was always told this one like saying and it like really stuck with me it was go big or go home. But now looking back on it, I don't think there should be like a or a go home. It, I think the whole go big sat in my head as you have to give this 100%. Like no matter what you do, um, don't be afraid to like put yourself fully into the situation. Give everything you have into whether it's you're trying something new, whether you know what you're doing and you've done it 100 times. Just be a hundred percent there and show up for yourself because that is like, I feel like how people come to love what they're doing is because they're fully there and they believe that they should also be there. And I guess for women going into the outdoors, especially that is the number one piece of advice. Go big, just leave it there. I like that. Kind of bouncing off these ideas an experience that i had recently with something as simple as running on my streets at home is what kept me from running in the past is the thought of what if someone looks at me weird what if something doesn't like what if when i'm running someone stares at me what if i don't look like a runner what if someone sees the imposter that i am because i didn't see myself as good enough and Recently, I had the break. No. This is for me. The mindset shift of it doesn't matter what anyone else around you is thinking. It matters what's going on in here. And that whole self-talk that we've had this, we've mentioned this entire session. 
do it for yourself and just keep reminding yourself I'm here for me and whatever that reason is that you are here for yourself own it yeah. Daily, um, such a good word I that I was trying to figure out how to say that as well and you just said it perfectly but yeah as much as you can it's you tune out the like the thought of like oh gosh what's everybody else gonna think of me like it is find find a friend to go for a run with and wear a tutu I mean like be don't take yourself so seriously out there like I when I go ski with my friends we sometimes wear costumes and tutus or when we go hiking we'll wear costumes like it's just fun and you like if you take yourself so seriously all the time or you're so concerned with like what other people are going to think of you, who cares? Like, who cares if somebody looks at you and is like, oh, they don't belong here. Well, too bad. I'm here anyway. Like, it's just, I mean, we don't get to control the other people's thoughts. So don't waste any energy thinking about other people's thoughts. You have no control over other people, just yourself. That's it. Which actually is so relieving because how exhausting would that be if we had control over what everybody else thought? Just yourself. You're 100% responsible for your own actions and reactions. And it's re it's just a relief. It's a relief that you're the only person that you have to worry about. For sure. Um, yeah. Like, and especially now, like, and I mean, like, they're raising more, like, awareness about just, like, mental health and what you think and whatever and like that's what they say like a lot of that what is it is what other people are thinking about you and stuff and I think that's a really powerful and strong place to be to be where like I'm only in control of my thoughts my actions my reactions like you said and once you notice that you acknowledge that control and you have that control then you have that power to just be like I right, fudge what everyone thinks or says it might be saying or whatever I'm having fun, I'm happy, I'm smiling, so I'm just gonna keep doing me, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I I guess now, cause I'm nearing to a close, um, just kind of open it up to if anyone has any questions for anyone about anything. <laughs> now is your chance. Yeah, Chloe. I was just wondering, how do you go about backpacking and how do you like train and prepare for it? Anyone can cut, chime in. Yeah, if you. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to help answer that one. I'm actually so one of the things that I would do for my clients. Um, I well, I call them participants. Clients are technical. Um, I would actually write them uh, workout training plans in order to get um, prepared for a backpacking trip. Um, but the best way to train for a backpacking trip is to put a backpack on, throw some weight in it, and hike. Um, it's definitely my growing up, my mom would take empty, um, laundry detergent containers, fill them with water and she would pack two of them up a, like our local hill, like four times a week. It was insane. Um, but that's a really great way is you just find, put books, rocks, whatever you want throw them in a backpack and, and do it. If you don't have a backpack, like if you're just going to rent a backpack for your actual trip, um, I box steps. Um, so if you can find a box that's like a couple feet high and just constantly go over and over, find a stair machine, find a set of stairs. If you have a really steep hill, lots of hill training. We have power line hills here and they're so steep it's stupid um i throw ellie who is 30 pounds now so it's a lovely 35 pound weight training i throw her in the backpack and i just hike them so my advice that's so funny because that's what my dad actually would do because he's a 46 it and a train for any of the height is so like the 46 high peaks in the other round deck and to train for that, he would literally throw on his gear, his same pants, his hiking boots, the hat, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he would hike in our town. And we would sometimes get calls from people. And we got a call one day and she was like, 
to my mom. She goes, yo, did you finally give Rich the boot, which is my dad? Because he looked like a homeless man just walking through our town because he had all his gear on. But it worked. It, he was training, and he was, like, able to go and hike and climb. So I think that's just really funny. I thought I'd share. Um, but, yeah, definitely great advice for if you want to start getting into backpacking, just put it on and just go. Also, just to throw it in there, if you have, sorry, I know the guy talking, um, <laughs> but uh, if you need to like borrow any gear, you know, or like nails, whatever, or Winnie, or um, like we've got a ton of gear. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more, you can talk to me, or you can talk to my wife, Jordan, or I mean, you can talk to, to Dr. Um, the connections are here, use them. Um, Laura. Hi, I have, I have a lot of questions. Um, I have, like, the first one, um, I just want to say, Dr. Olstead, I had your class freshman year, and it has still been one of the most impactful classes, mm -hmm. um, sustainability, and I have been using it for um, family and consumer science education for my methods class. I've done bulletin boards on sustainability, I've done lesson plans, and in relation to food and fashion. Um, so hopefully if I ever do end up teaching one day, I'm taking what I've learned in your class and applying it. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, and then Anna, I had a question for you. So in the beginning, you said that you were working with juveniles, um, for outward bounds and all of that. So is there something that you learned from that, that would be something applicable for a classroom or for, um, specifically like middle school, high school kind of age? Um, I was just wondering if you had any advice regarding that. Yeah, are you asking about like um, teaching roles? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like teaching roles or just anything that you learned about that age group and um, connection to outside and any kind of like, whether that was like um, any kind of like discipline related or like anything that, um, I don't know, just anything, anything that you learned. Yeah, um, I think one thing is just like meeting people where they're at because um, in like an outdoor space, if you're someone who has done a lot of outdoor things, like, I don't know, it's just really important to just like level down with people, I think, and like be so open and not judgmental to any question they might have because if you want someone to like enjoy or learn from an experience, like, first you need to be meeting their like survival need. Like they need to feel comfortable enough to be like in this space with you and I don't know, getting something from it. But I think that applies in other classrooms too, especially for that age. Um, there is this like focus a lot of times on like discipline, which is obviously really important too. But I think that like, I don't know, like listening to what people have to say and like you don't know what their life is like outside of your own classroom space. So I think just like being as real with them as you can. Um, I also think that anyone can do way more than they think they can do. Um, and I think that would apply in the classroom too, that like people would be like, oh no, you're not gonna see me get in that boat. Like, uh-uh, not getting in the boat. And days later they would be like, paddling 10 miles, like front of the convoy, all on their own, you know? And so I think it's like, um, yeah, I guess just like those steps of like letting them discover that for themselves because you telling them won't like allow them to discover that, but like they have that in them. And so it's kind of your job to make them realize that, I guess, I don't know. I would have to think about it more, but that's a great question. Thank you for all that advice. I appreciate it because I, I find myself going towards like more like non-traditional things um, as far as education. Like all of my classmates tend to be like, oh, we're going to do this like whatever lab. But I tend to be like more as far as like project based and more like restorative justice type like discipline versus like all these other types of things. So I just I wanted to just hear um, what you had um, with that experience. And then the other thing that I have a question about is if anyone has any favorite spots around the country or any other advice, because um, I just bought a bus like yesterday, like a school bus, and we're doing a conversion. And um, and I'm really, really excited about it. So if anyone has any advice um, in relation to that, just 
let me know. This is Tira, Dr. Olstead, chiming in, and I'll just say this country is gorgeous. Basically, you can drive a bus, you can go to Maine, you can go to Florida, see the monkeys, the monkeys. Um, go to go to Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona, which is the most beautiful place on earth. Go through Canada, go through Alaska, maybe wait till the pandemic is over, but really drive anywhere. And there's so many state parks, local parks, you, you, national, it doesn't even have to be parks, so just this country is we're so rich with beautiful wild places drive anywhere and then get out of the bus and go for a walk or run and enjoy it yeah i'm really partial to the north cascades national park it's my home and it's it is spectacular um and there's amazing hikes you can do that are you know, a couple miles right off the right off the highway that goes through the park. So there, yeah, definitely. If you can get over to the the good old PNW, it's totally worth it. I have a question. Um, and you saying uh, mentioning like only a couple miles off the trail. I'm wondering, have any of you? Probably not from Dr. Elstead's story. This might be more <laughs> towards Dr. Elstead. But um, have any of you ever had to call the Rangers for yourself or someone else? And I only say that because you said you said you were terrified um, up in the, 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 the. Wow, I cannot come up with that name. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but have any of you ever had to have interactions with Rangers before? And what's your experience with that? Um. I can share. I haven't had to call a ranger, but I have had to do like a rescue sort of situation before, which I don't know if this fits in your question at all. Um, but yeah, I had someone have an anaphylactic reaction. And so we had to um, epi them and paddle them out in the middle of the night. And yeah, I think it is really crazy. It's just really important to be like, aware that those sort of things can happen and not like live or do your adventures like scared that they're going to but just like I don't know be conscientious that that is like a possibility or you could run across people that are having like similar things um going on and yeah I think that like safety and training are really important and sometimes it's easy to look over them because um you're just like going to have a good time but I don't know I think it's important to keep it in in mind or in perspective that like things can happen, but also you do have options. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Olsa, did you say, you seemed like you had, you wanted to say something before Anna. Did you still? Oh, that's, I spent several years working as a summit steward in the Adirondacks and had to call the Rangers a bunch of times and just everybody I've worked with there or in the national parks, they're they're professionals, so they're there to help. Ideally, we don't have to call them, but things do happen, so it's always nice to know that there there are people like that out there who can help. Thank you. I just think it's important for people to know that th that that is an option. That like that they have resources at their fingertips, and not to be scared to to make that call when they need to. Thank you. Um, it looks like we are getting pretty close to the end of our session. Um, we have about five minutes left. So, Hale, did you have anything that you wanted to close up with? Or are we still just going to ask questions until the end? Um, I was going to put one last call out there if anyone had any questions, comments, or anything. Um, otherwise, I would just want to say thank you so very much to our panelists for coming to talk with us. Um, I know I learned a lot. I really enjoyed getting to talk with you guys and listen to what you guys have to say and hear your amazing stories. Um, and I also want to say thank you to the people who showed up and came to listen. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and had fun. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I just yeah, really appreciate you guys spending your time to talk. And I loved hearing everything of what you guys had to say. I, I want to put in a little shameless plug here as a mama. Um, you 
if you are like at all struggling to think about how to have a family and still pursue the outdoors, it can totally be done. It's a little more difficult and complicated, but it can totally be done. I started pursuing ultra running after I had Ellie. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's made the spending time in the outdoors so much more special having her there because I get to see this little girl um, like explore all the things around her and learn. So I don't know if I just want to encourage you guys, like you can totally have a family and still go after stuff in the outdoors. If, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to say that I dropped some links into the chat of resources if you're you or someone you know is trying to get into the outdoors more and might not have the resources or the community. Um, these are some pretty good inspirational links. Um, including DEC is becoming an outdoor woman. Um, which is a program that helps people who don't have any resources or have had no experience to be able to put them in the outdoors. All right. Right. I also oh. brought the link in here um, just for students. Um, if you guys want to mark yourselves as attended, I believe all you have to do is click the link. So. Yeah. Yep. And a little blue uh, banner will show up on the bottom of your screen, and that's all you need to do. That'll mark you as attended. Wait, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, I don't think you have to. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh yeah, because I'm not um, It's for a program through the school that says that you've been an active member of the campus community, um, yeah. which is neat. You get like a little tassel when you graduate and everything. So, yeah. So. And I get credit. <laughs> <laughs> we can send you a this sticker. Awesome. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> I just wanted to say um, for those resources too, I'm sure the other panel members um, are also open to this, I'm not trying to speak for others, but if you guys have any questions related to my line of life, work, whatever I do, um, just reach out. I'm pretty sure Haley has, Hales has my uh, contact. Um, yep. So just wanna offer that to anyone. Yeah, I agreed. We appreciate that. Yeah, you guys are so inspiring, like role models. Yeah, amazing. But yeah, other than that, I say if no one else has anything else they want to say or share or ask, um, you guys are free to go and you can head out. And just, yeah, thank you so much. We really thank you so much. It.